So I'll tell you what's going down. Do you know who I am? They told me you were VIP. Well connected to the government. What kind of a moron forgets to pick up his laptop at a repair shop? You're a Biden. Act like one. Everything he built, his life, I just ruined it all. I want to know everything that's on that laptop that can ruin my erection. My friends, it's time there to party! Roll. Get it, didn't you know? I'm taking control. I'm making appearance and I gotta go. Cause I get them dancing with their hands up. Yeah, I walk in and they go bananas. I'm a bad guy. Yeah. I'm an artist. And they're cheering my Tell me how I can help you. Well, I don't deserve help. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been through worse. You're the smartest man I know. Thanks, Dad. I just wish I could smack some sense into you. I'll never forget Cory Bob. He was a bad dude. No joke. Dad, we were talking about suffering. I can't seem to find anything but positive stuff on the Bidens. Who's the point Ben for the foreign policy in the Obama regime? Joe Biden. So it looks like you need a billion dollars. So the obvious next question is, where's Hunter? I can remember getting paid some money, but I can't remember what for. Well, my dad says we never discuss my businesses, period. Or my cut. What's happening in there? Joe's in on it. Party's over! <laughs> you had everything, Hunter, and you threw it all away. You hope the laptop will take down everybody with you. Get out! China's not our enemy. They're not bad folks, folks. I love my dad, and I just want to make him proud. I am the one who brings in all the deals. I am the one. The boy. So that was a trailer for a new film that's just been released recently called My Son Hunter, directed, of course, by Robert Davi. And joining me today to discuss the film is the main star of the film playing Joe Biden's son. Quite a tricky role. So that is Lawrence Fox, actor and leader of the Reclaim Party. So Lawrence, thank you so much for taking your time out for me. How are you doing? You're looking well? Thanks, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I've... Uh... I'm just, uh, I've got the Queen's funeral on in the background, so I'm, uh, yeah, just, it's a funny old day, isn't it? It is a funny old day, definitely. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about your uh, your film that you starred in. I mean, I think the main question I want to know is, how do you even prepare for such a role? I mean, you're playing the, the, the president's son, and uh, we know about all the corruption and the deviance, of course, rooted within... Uh, that family. So how do you even prepare for a role such as that? Well, you can't, you, I mean, I, I, from a practical level, I just, I listened to his audio book, uh, Beautiful Things, you know, just to get a taste of what, how, and he reads it. So I, I did that uh, and I found it quite sort of compelling, oddly compelling. Um, uh, so you want to hear a bit of his voice, how he sees himself. Um, but you, your job basically is just to try and find the human in amongst all of the story rather than try and do a sort of political version of, you know, a, a sort of right wing woke version takedown mm -hmm. piece of, uh, of 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 a man. So I just tried to find out who the human being was really as much as possible. And, and David, Mamet, David Mamet always says, he says, just, you know, your character's in the script. So you just say the lines. Yeah. Yeah. How did how did that feel? Just like emboldening his sort of character and his persona. I mean, that must have been quite quite a weird one. <laughs> yeah, it was quite uncomfortable. Uh, well, you know, it's it, obviously he's got a pretty chaotic life. So um, it was it's you know when you you whether you like it or not, without being a method actor or any of that stuff, uh, you you sort of pick up on some traits of characters you play. So his life is really chaotic. Your life starts to become quite chaotic as well at the same time and while you're playing them. And then when you finish, you go back to normal. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, it, it made me feel a bit itchy, un unwell, uncomfortable. Smoking all the fake crack didn't help. Smoking all the, uh, snorting all the fake coke didn't help either. So um, mm -hmm. I, I'd actually, I just felt ill for most of it. It's good because I looked ill. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I was going to say, you're... 
the movie actually hit 90%, I believe, on Rotten Tomatoes. What um, is it? Yes, I think I saw a spread from uh, Breitbart, I believe, uh, put it up and said that it hit over 90%, which is fantastic. Uh, um, that's... Is that news to you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm terrible at... Um, I, I don't... Well, you know, once I've done the acting bit, I just move on. Oh, yeah, look, audience mm. score 91%. There you go. Um, yeah. What reaction were you sort of expecting from the film? I mean, it's quite a, a heavy role to play. I thought that uh, it would be received in the way it is received. You know, one star review from The Guardian and better reviews from elsewhere. But I'm surprised that the... Um, the uh, Really, I, I don't know. I don't read reviews either, so I don't know what... Um, I read, uh, unless I get sent one, and it's a positive one I sent out. Um, I don't know. I think there's still a desire to bury this story and pretend it's not really real, you know, particularly in the mainstream media. The Guardian is still denying that the laptop is authentic and verified in large parts of it. So, you know, we're just living in a major psyop where um, we're just being lied to relentlessly by the by the media we want, we formally trusted up until about a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know you said you you don't, of course, read reviews, um, but you mentioned the Guardian as well, and I saw uh, you yeah. reposted about when uh, the Guardian um, left that scathing review. What's your what's your proper response to um, to people like the Guardian who who watch the film and then say things like they 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 were saying? <laughs> well, I just you know it's it's I wear that as a badge of honour, you know. I mean, if the guy, if you're not slagging off the Guardian, but getting slagged off by the Guardian, you're not, you're, not, you're doing something wrong. Generally, in showbiz, you know, if the Guardian think it's good, it's a pretty sure fire. Like I used to judge whether I go to a play based on what review the Guardian gave it. If the Guardian gave it one star, I'd go and watch it. If the Guardian gave it five stars, I'd avoid it like the plague. <laughs> so you know, it's just it's just a peculiar kind of weird newspaper, isn't it, the Guardian? But um, it's. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't care. And what I find interesting, actually, is it's always, as I put it in my tweet, it's always women of a certain age who are all really upper middle class. And they go to, um, you know, they all went to posh schools and they're all white. And um, and I think they all want really secretly want to have sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, because, you know, it must be terrible, Um living your life in with so much hatred of some another human being it's sort of mad and and you know particularly who's that one who writes for the guardian what's her name marina hyde because you get a more posh middle class name than marina hyde i i think early on in my cancellation she just devoted week after week to writing articles about how evil and horrible i was and i was just like babe you can't hide it you fancy me <laughs> But it's all right. Go go back to your your little um, your soy boy, and um, we'll see how. It <laughs> Gosh, well there you have it. Um, I wanted to move on as well. Um, you've been juggling, of course, between acting and, of course, you're doing things with um, uh, the Bad Law Project as well, yeah. and of course, being a leader of a political party. Um, yeah. How do you make that that balance between all of them? That's that's quite extraordinary, isn't it? By uh, going to bed, trying to go to bed early. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's mad. Um, the bad law is is new, so it's requiring a lot of attention. There aren't any elections at the moment, so the reclaim party is you know there, and we're going to stand a few candidates in the general in certain strategic places because we really believe in people. Um, in, in those areas. We don't really have the infrastructure to do to stand in millions and millions of places, but we want to stand in areas where there is problems with things like free speech, you know, like you know, places like Batley and Spen, mm -hmm. where free speech was such a huge issue. And um then bad law, we we're working on a sort of little suite of cases now that we'll start to announce as we go forward. And um then the acting that you know they'll can I'm recancelled. You know I was only let out of the woods for a couple of minutes. You know that to do the film, and then now I'm straight back to pariah. I don't have an agent or anything. Got no one who will who will represent me because I'm not woke. Right. It's yeah. it's interesting because I remember all those few years ago um, when you're on Question Time, and uh, 
it all just sort of kicked off. And I remember watching a, an interview with yourself and you explained how it was quite a dark turn in your life where where critics and people online were, were really going after you. And you, you, you got into a bit of a, a spiral, if you don't mind me bringing that up. It's so easy to throw the charge of racism at everybody, and it's really starting what to get What worries me now. about your comment is, you are a white, privileged male who has oh, no experience. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, can I just... I can't I, help what I am. I was born like this. It's an immutable so you, characteristic. So, so to call cannot, me a white, privileged male is to be racist. You're being racist. You I mean, I mean, of course, things change and you form new friends and you form new, of course, people to speak to uh, about this sort of thing. Um, I'm not quite sure what the question is I, I'm going how with. Hard, but, um, how hard is it? Well, mm. well, you know, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible that we live in a world where you're going to, where you're stopped from providing for your family because you don't you won't slag off this country and the great things that it's done and achieved and you know it's it's really really depressing uh and it upset me a lot and then, and then I got over it and then the, when the film came out it upset me again <clears throat> I think it's dreadful it's such a dreadful reflection of how fra emotionally fragile some of these uh you know kids that are getting indoctrinated in schools who are now coming out of schools going to production companies and stuff like that making this really sort of monochromatic myopic boring drama uh and you know they they go well if you don't agree with me about everything then uh I, I'm going to take your li life and livelihood away but they're playing with fire now you see because um not only is it, you know, it's an elite class that are talking down to the working class people of this country and telling them they're in some way privileged, mm. you know, and, and it's and it's and it's really it's very dangerous. It's happened before. And, um, you know, the tide will turn and, you know, it'll it'll turn into a, into a different system. But um, I think I think we're getting towards the point where this woke movement, people are going to start really standing up to it because it needs to be stood up to. It's very, very horrible, censorious, anti-democratic, anti-creative. I mean, when was the last time you turned on? I mean, there are a couple of half decent things on Netflix and Amazon sometimes, you know, but it's it's just such a everything's a moral lecture. You can't escape from it. It's it's politics used to be, you know, people would keep it to certain places in their lives, but now it's everywhere. Yeah, Everything. and social media has sort of ruined it as well, mm. in that way because it's um, you know, people are addicted to to social media and feeling that they can get online campaigns going and stuff like that. But it's um, it's just a bad. It's just not a very nice time in in mankind at the moment. Mm. That's what it feels like to me. In um in your opinion, I mean, I would I would argue that uh, that politics now it used to be a, the very boring subject that only all the older generation would sort of um, adapt in and uh, and you know pursue careers in. But now it's sort of, it's almost like you said, just everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Uh, would you say now it's it's incredibly sensationalist? I'm trying to figure out the words to sort of describe it now. But um, what would you say? is um in terms of the climate of, of politics do you think it's it's going to get better uh, in terms of uh, the current tide of like you mentioned with wokeism and uh, and lots of other things do you think things would get better or worse i think i think it's, it's gonna unfortunately it's gonna have to get worse before it gets better you know because it's not reached you, I, I always keep i'm always keeping one eye on america mm. you know and and you listen to biden's speech the other day where he basically called half of america uh semi-fascists mm. so that's a very 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 dangerous place to go and we can see it in the uk some of this stuff coming into the uk i think it'll get worse uh, I think that really normal people will start getting cancelled and, you know, people with very moderate views. I mean, I think my views are pretty moderate, but um, we've had to shift so far over to accommodate wokeism. Um, I think it'll get worse. And I think it's going to get, we'll probably hit the peak of it um, to, as we reach the next general election. You know, I, that that will be. But the, these movements have been, have, have taken 25 years to build. And it will probably take 25 years to dismantle. And we'll all look back and go, what a horrible time that was to be alive. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, 
tell us a bit about the uh, the Bad Law Project because uh, you've been really working closely with them uh, really recently, and uh, I interviewed you not so long ago about uh, a particular case. Um, and of course, as you know, the non-crime hate incidences that's it's just not going away almost. And um, yeah, could you tell us a little bit for those who don't know about the Bad Law Project? Tell us, yeah. About, so- yeah. So we, so we worked out, uh, as we've been talking about in this conversation, we worked out that the problem is politics, right? The problem is that politics is in everything. It's in our police, it's in our financial institutions, the judiciary, education, health, everything is political. And the Bad Law Project we formed um, to get the politics out of it. And the only way you can get the politics out of something is apply the law fairly to a situation. So if, for example, the Darren Brady case, what happened there where he was visiting for these ridiculously Orwellian non-crime hate incidents, we've then got, um, you know, stuff going on in schools with kids misgendering other students and all of this stuff and really, 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 really dangerous, um, dangerous stuff. Uh, so what we're, what we're doing is we're building with, and yeah, we're having, we've got someone who's not being allowed to qualify as a psychologist because they won't admit that they're racist. It's just unbelievable, dreadful, uh, horrible stuff. So what we want, Bad Law Project weirdly exists to take the politics out of stuff and give people confidence that, you know, there's someone's got their back if they if they end up in a, in a difficult situation. And you've got the Free Speech Union, which defend people when their careers are under threat, and we're going to go and attack. And that is the difference. We, we, as I think Harry said the other day, Harry Miller, who started it with me, we get you know we we will uh, we'll bite their heads off. That's you know we 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 I don't want politics in my kids' classroom. I don't. Mm. I don't want my kid to be taught about gender ideology. I don't want them to be taught about um, white privilege, and I don't want them to be taught about diversity, equity, and inclusion, which yeah. is um, the, means the exact opposite of what it says. So yeah, we we are we're going to challenge all this stuff in the courts so people can see in the courts what's uh, affected. And we're also going to educate uh, people as to what their kids are being taught in school, what's going on in the prison service, in in all of the foundational institutions. That's the point of it. And then the reclaim party will turn up and go, this is what we would do. So Lawrence, where, where can we find all of your projects? Um, because you're doing a lot of work, like you just said. Um, firstly, where, where can we watch the film, My Son Hunter? Let's start with that. So I think you watch the film on, uh, you go to mysonhunter.com and then you can buy it. And I think they send you a little six digit code to your phone and you then enter that in and you can watch it there. Um, the Bad Law Project is uh, uh, badlawproject.com. The Reclaim Party is reclaimparty.co.uk. And then we're all over the social media where um, we, we have, I think it's the Reclaim Party is the one on social media. Bad Law Team is the Bad Law Project one. There's me, who's um, Loza Fox, never says a thing wrong on social media. Not at all a wind up much and whatsoever. And um, that's, and then there's Harry, Harry the Owl. He's doing the Bad Law. And um yeah, that's 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 our presence. We're on Facebook. We're on all of those sorts of things as well. So you'll find us there. Brilliant, Lawrence Fox. Thank you so much for that. Cheers, bro. If you enjoy my honest boots on the ground journalism, you can now help support me over at ukreporters.co.uk. Visit the website. Keep yourself up to date with all of my latest reports. And if you'd like to donate, you can. Ukreporters.co. Dot UK. Thank you.